Why is sex hormone binding globulin low in PCOS? What is the underlying factors that influence sex hormone binding globulin in females and males? And you know what could be driving this process over the short term and over the long term? Uh, my name is Dr. Taranella, and if you're curious why sex hormone binding globulin is low in PCOS, keep watching. We're going to get into the details. We're all about helping you gain a deeper understanding of your health and what's going on with your body. Hopefully, this video gets you a little bit closer towards that aim. I also wanted to point out that sometimes when I'm producing this content, uh, I get a s statistic wrong or the name of something wrong, and almost always there's a corresponding blog article on our website, SW Integrated Medicine forward slash blog. You can find it there. Uh, those oftentimes go into a little bit more detail than the um, than the videos do as well. So please uh, check that out if you're interested. And um, it does take you know considerable effort to produce this content. So if you're liking the information, please click on the like button and subscribe to the channel. If you do have questions about any of the content, please ask it in the comment section uh, here or on the blog. Uh, that's why I'm producing the information for you to gain that deeper understanding. So ask the questions if you have them. Uh, hope you enjoy the video. Thank you for watching. Let's get into it. All right, so why is sex hormone binding globulin low in women with PCOS? So first of all, uh, let's define some terminology here, sex, uh, sex hormone binding globulin and PCOS. So first, PCOS is more of a syndrome than it is like a, uh, a disease state or co concrete diagnosis. I say this because it's more of a combination of several different characteristics or patterns rather than a clear-cut physiology that fits that everyone fits into um, <clears throat> but there are some you know commonalities and distinct things about PCOS that other people don't have and there's sort of a you know a, a commonality and some of those things are you know typically there is uh, weight gain and insulin resistance uh, decreased fertility and hormonal imbalances that make uh, conception a lot harder. Sometimes there's actual lack of ov ovulation, seems to be in more severe cases that will be present. Uh, there's andro androgenization, so basically females taking on more male characteristics with a corresponding high testosterone or more specifically high free testosterone. And there's uh, ovarian cysts and other uh, hormonal imbalances. Um, but not all women have all aspects of these, um, but what seems to be uh, most common in all of uh, m most of the women that you know get this diagnosis is there's ovarian cysts and there's some sort of uh, problem with the insulin resistance and sex hormone binding globulin. So, so what is sex hormone binding globulin? Sometimes it's abbreviated as SHBG, uh, and uh, basically what sex hormone binding globulin does is it carries uh, hormones around in the body. So specifically, it carries estrogen and carries testosterone. And, you know, when we say estrogen, it's all estrogen. So E1, E2, E3, uh, and for testosterone, it carries uh, dihydrotestosterone and other forms of testosterone uh, as well. So what happens with PCOS is you have this androgenization, and part of what's driving that is a decrease in the sex hormone binding globulin. This happens through two, uh, two distinct uh, mechanisms. But first, um, a little bit about the sex hormone binding globulin story. Uh, so, so females generally have more sex hormone binding globulin because uh, sex hormone binding globulin is increased in the liver. The liver produces this uh, protein, and it goes up when you're when uh, there's more estrogen floating around. So estrogen is a signal to make more uh, sex hormone binding globulin, and it actually goes down in the presence of insulin. So in PCOS, there is uh, increased insulin that drives down the sex hormone binding globulin. So typically. Females have lots of this sex hormone binding globulin, but because of the insulin resistance, their sex hormone binding globulin goes down. And as a result, uh, there's less of this floating around. And because of that, the testosterone levels, uh, the free testosterone goes up. So testosterone, you have total testosterone and then bioavailable testosterone. It's usually you know, a fraction of the total testosterone. The uh, bioavailable is basically the unbound, so meaning it's not bound to any other proteins. Specifically, sex hormone binding globulin is the one that typically binds up most of the testosterone and the other hormones. So it kind of works like a, a buffer, if you will. Um, so again, why is sex hormone binding globulin uh, low in someone with 
PCOS. So most of the time, uh, people, uh, women with PCOS, uh, are producing more insulin. So that's what insulin resistance is in the presence of the same carbohydrate load or same uh, macronutrient load. You need more insulin to get that into the tissues. And insulin has uh, an opposite reaction uh, to sex hormone binding globulin. So when insulin goes up, sex hormone binding globulin goes down. And then as a result of that, testosterone goes up. Uh, so, so that's how that relationship goes. Um, and most of the time, you know, there that's how the, the issue starts. But there's also this issue with estrogen, too. So some women with PCOS also have anovulation, uh, meaning they don't ovulate anymore, which causes low estrogen. And as a result of that, uh, you know, uh, th that estrogen also has an influence on that sex hormone binding globulin, which will, you know, uh, the low estrogen will keep it low or prevent it from rising up like it normally does. So um, probably, uh, and you know, I found some paper and research to support this, uh, is over time you get that anovulation, beginning stages of PCOS, you're likely having, you know, the insulin resistance and uh, over time, you, then you start to have androgenization and then over time, anovulation. So um, that's just a theory, but uh, there is some, you know, supporting uh, research, and I'll put a link um, to that paper, uh, a couple papers uh, in the description. But we see, you know, the effect of high glucose and high insulin on other organs and other tissues and how it damages uh, different organs and different tissues. So it's no surprise that this may or could be happening uh, in that sort of linear fashion over time. Now, there may be, you know, some shuffling of those things, but generally, you know, the end stage is where there's, you know, lack of ovulation. For the most part, you know, these things can be reversed uh, too. So, you know, it's basically we want to treat that uh, insulin resistance aspect of it first and foremost. Um, <clears throat> but because, you know, the sex hormone binding globulin has a lot of different things that it can uh, can drive that or, or influence that, you may not see a linear uh, increase in your sex hormone binding globulin. But the trend, as long as you're, you know, treating the insulin resistance, should get better. All right. So hopefully that answers the question, why is sex hormone binding globulin low in PCOS? Uh, um, if you like the video, please click on the like button, subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please ask them in the comment section.